Hey everyone, so I know there's been a lot of pistol content on this channel lately, which tends to be less popular than the rifle stuff. I do have some interesting rifle stuff on the way. At least the rifles are interesting, my content maybe not so much. But today we're going to have to suffer through another pistol video. This of course is a Beretta Model 84 BB. Uh, these are police surplus pistols. They've been imported into the U.S. off and on for several years now. Uh, there's a few retailers that carry them. This one in particular comes from Palmetto State. They've been doing a few, uh, you know, various discounts lately, so I figured why not? These are listed in excellent condition, and so anyways, we'll get into condition in a little bit greater detail in a bit. Uh, first, a little historic background in case you're not familiar with the, 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 the history of the Beretta kind of uh, 81 family of firearms. So it's a design that, from what I understand, began production in the, the 70s. This was intended pretty much primarily for the law enforcement market. Uh, where it was quite successful. Obviously, they were used in Italy, Israel. I think some European countries used them as well. Uh, production continued, I think, all the way into the 21st century. There was kind of a brief pause, and I think they're back in production again. If you've seen the name Beretta Cheetah, uh, that's this pistol, well, essentially the same pistol, but that, that designation, I believe, started being used in the 90s. By the way, I'm not an expert, so you can correct me on any of my uh, misstatements, if you will. Um, there's quite a few different variations and, you know, sub variations of, of this whole family. It's, it's quite complex. I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, there are some videos out there that have done that. So if you're kind of interested, uh, we can do that. Uh, today, we're kind of discussing specifically the Model 84 BB. Just to quickly go over some technical stuff in case you're not familiar with these. These are a double action, single action pistol. Uh, however, they are straight blowback operated. There is no breech locking mechanism. So it, even though it looks like a miniaturized Beretta 92, it isn't exactly that. Of course, there are some commonalities. Um, it is chambered in 380. It features a uh, ambidextrous thumb safety. On the Model 84 BB, uh, this does not function as any sort of decocker. Uh, it does allow the pistol to be carried cocked and locked. However, later iterations of the design would incorporate a decocker, but from what I understand, they cannot be carried cocked and locked. Um, so if, if you're going to try to carry this thing uh, with the loaded chamber and uh, decocked, you would have to lower the hammer manually. Some people get nervous about doing that sort of thing. Obviously, you know, observe all of your usual uh, safety rules and so forth. Other than that, we do have a uh, mag release that is not ambidextrous, but it is reversible, which I may end up doing because I'm a tendon myself. It feeds from a uh, double stack 13 round magazine. Uh, there are of course members of this family that are uh, feature a single stack magazine where you give up some capacity in exchange for a little bit of slimness in the grip. Uh, it features an aluminum alloy frame. So for its size, it's actually relatively lightweight. So uh, for example, it's pretty much the same size as something like a CZ82, but it feels like it's maybe half a pound lighter. Uh, that's really about it for the kind of technical side of things. In terms of what you get specifically from Palmetto, it just ships in this box. You get a, uh, a trigger lock that you'll probably throw out because you probably have a million of them, and one magazine, and that's about it. Now again, they list these in excellent condition, and mine is really not too terrible. I would say not too far off the mark. There obviously are some areas of finish loss. For example, the bluing is a little thin on this corner. Uh, a little nicks in here, here and there on the um, on the frame. I've seen some reviews where people's are you know considerably worse cosmetically. Mechanically, these are just you know perfectly functional pistols. They haven't been shot an absolute ton, uh, but they will show some signs of use. They're not like perfectly pristine. By the way, the import mark, I don't even know how it shows up, but it's right here on the bottom of the slide. So uh, really quite discreet. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, one, one of the better placements uh, as far as import marks go, instead of making it this you know hideous billboard on the side. So overall, condition-wise, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, certainly could be a little better. Certainly could be a lot worse. Uh, and some people, unfortunately, like I said, I have to report uh, just kind of from what I've seen, do a little bit worse in terms of condition. But overall, I, I think it's not not terrible by any means. Uh, would I recommend them? I mean. Obviously, that depends on what you're after. Uh, I'm personally quite pleased with this purchase. They're a pretty good value. Uh, the new production cheetahs, you know, they tend to go for something like six to eight bills when you see them. So these going for, you know, right around, say, three and a half to four, you know, depending on what sales are going on. 
a pretty good value for a really neat pistol. Uh, there are some Turkish clones out there that are just exact copies of the design that use the same magazine and everything that are actually even a little bit cheaper still, maybe low to mid 300s or so. So if you just like the design and you don't care about it being a real Beretta or, you know, a police pistol with all these, you know, neat little markings and stuff, uh, then yeah, you could probably save a little bit of money uh, going that route. Uh, so if you're kind of into Beretta or Italian firearms or police firearms or Cold War era firearms, uh, this certainly could be interesting to you as far as, you know, for your collection for any sort of more practical purposes. Uh, wouldn't be my first choice, but it's actually not the absolute worst choice either. I know it's only a 380, but, you know, if you're going to have a smaller caliber, a weaker caliber, at least you get a, you know, a, a decent amount. We're talking, you know, 14 iron capacity. Uh, on top of that, you do get a bit more barrel length than you would from something like the Ruger LCP class of 380, so, you know, a little bit more velocity. And because of its, you know, relatively large uh, size, uh, although it's not huge, it's still really relatively, you know, it's not, not a big gun by any means, um, and its weight, it's actually fairly easy to shoot. I've seen people describe these as shooting a bit like loud 22s, and that's actually fairly accurate, I would say. So not the absolute worst choice in that regard. I, I would, wouldn't say it, it would be, you know, my like top pick by any stretch of the imagination, but overall, it wouldn't even be the worst in that regard either. Uh, but in any case, this is about what you can expect from these uh, if you go ahead and, and uh, pull the trigger yourself. That's really kind of it, I suppose. So thank you for watching, as always.